Yeah. I have to get one with my newfound dogs. I know. Go now. Now I have to spend my money to fit me. All right, good evening, everyone. It is May 14th, 2013. It is 7, um, well, past 7 p.m., sorry about that. Um, we are ready to start the North Kingstown School Committee work session. If everyone could please rise and say the pledge to the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. <coughs> Lorraine, if you could please call the roll. Linda Avanzato. Here. John Biscarden. Here. Larry Cerisi. Here. Cheryl Clarkin. Here. Robert Jones. Here. William Munch. Here. Kimberly Page. Here. Julia Hell. Thank you. And I will note, I believe that our um, two students are um, taking the AP history exam tonight. So that is why they are, they are not here joining us. So, okay. yes. Lorraine, could you please go over the calendars? May 27th, Memorial Day, all schools and offices closed. May 28th, school committee business meeting, 7 p.m., North Kingstown High School. This is an addition. June 4th is a wellness meeting at 3.30 p.m. Central Administration Building. June 7th, North Kingstown High School graduation, Ryan Center, 6 p.m. June 10th, policy subcommittee meeting, 9 a.m. Central Administration Building. June 11th, employee retirement reception at 6.15 p.m. followed by a school committee work session at 7 p.m. at North Kingstown High School. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the um, first item we have um, is a presentations recognitions. I'd just um, like to make a couple of recognitions tonight. I, meant, I mentioned this on an email last week, but it is worth uh, repeating at this venue. Um, we had a first um, team uh, from NK, teachers, parents, and students, to participate in the first annual Imagine Walk for Autism. The team raised over $8,000 for free autism education training for 30 members of the North Kingstown School Department. Um, and, you know, that, that's quite an effort that they made on behalf of students with autism, and it is much appreciated. Um, took up a lot of their time and raised a, a, good, a good amount of money. Um, also, we keep getting, you know, wonderful accolades for our music program. Um, the North Kingston High School Music Program uh, won at the, the, uh, the National Music Competition in Holyoke. Um, North Kingston High School competed against 30 other groups from around the country and scored superior rating, the highest possible rating in the competition. Only six superior ratings were handed out. North Kingstown nabbed three of those six. That's how good of a program we have. Um, the symphonic band and orchestra both won gold. The symphonic band was also honored with the title of best overall. And the concert choir came in second place in its category. Junior Julia Gershkoff won the award for best solo singer for her performance. We've also just had the um, Rhode Island Music Educators Association solo and, and ensemble festival, and a number of our students um, were considered best in the state for, for their efforts. So, you know, um, we are blessed to have such a, a wonderful music program. My own kids have been involved in it, and it really is wonderful. In fact, there's a, a, uh, a band concert tonight, so if you get tired of this, you may want to head on over there because they really are tremendous. So, um, thank you very much. So there you go. Not I might you. do that myself. Yeah, in not fact. you. So you know, uh, uh, congratulations uh, to them. And um, before we move on, I know we have a number of people here to talk about the bond this evening. And out of consideration for them, I would hope that we could uh, choose that item first, maybe. Sure. Um, so what? Right, up, right away. In fact. What, what Dr. Oje is talking about is if the committee would allow it, if we could bring item number five B one up to the front of the agenda right now. Is that all right with the committee? Absolutely, yes. All right, then we will do that. <coughs> so that is the, the CIP existing f um, bond, future bond, the approval of the general contractor for the summer bond construction work. The, the actual vote is um, the, the um, 
Town Council, I have learned, is responsible for voting for the contractor. What we are voting for tonight is to accept the ride reimbursement, as I understand it. And I'm going to ask Mr. Grundy to come on up, head of our facilities committee, and Mr. Bergeron, if you don't mind. And, and Jim Partridge, architect, to uh, talk about where we are in the process and what the role of the school committee is tonight. And if you have any questions, these are the people who can answer them for you. Uh, good evening. Phil Bergeron, Public Works Director. Uh, thanks for uh, allowing us to come here this evening. Um, as uh, Dr. Jay mentioned, the, um, the council awarded the summer construction project last night. I'm not sure if you received all the documentation and backup information I provided the council for last night's meeting. Were you able to email that out? Um, I, I, I was not okay, able to I do know. have some extra copies if anyone is interested, but I provided the council with a summary of the bids, um, the bid tabulation, a little bit of the history of what the project entails in terms of scope, um, our selection of the contractor. This was a little bit unique in that we had to do a, a rebid, a modified bid, because the original bids were over budget. And so there was a piece in there that had to get removed in order to bring the contract uh, back under uh, and within budget. Um, and my memo goes into a little bit of an explanation of that, but, but certainly we can talk about it. But in general, the entire scope that we have been working on since last summer, including the Davisville Middle School roof piece, which, which was the first phase, um, are being covered under this project. Um, the only addition I would, would say is the uh, Quinesset Elementary carpet which we, by the rebid, were allowed and enabled us to get into this project. So that will be covered by the $6.5 million bond. This project is um, a little different in that there are two funding sources. Um, the balance of the $9 million, which is a 2004 bond, and that is Wickford Middle School mechanical HVAC work. And then there are five schools that fall under the balance of the $6.5 million bond. And the, the, again, the Davisville Middle School group was the first piece of that. The modified bid was opened Monday in our office. Jim Parker was there. Cliff Seabury from our facility subcommittee was also there. Uh, uh, we did a scope review with the, uh, the low bidder and, and checked references and determined it's track builders, um, very reputable firm within the state. And based on our review and our analysis, we are very confident that he's a good selection and we'd like to move forward on this project as quickly as we can, as time is of the essence. So um, maybe Jim can talk a little bit about the ride process. Um, of course, we're looking for your concurrence with the recommendation of, of the last night's council award to track builders. But I think there's also another piece that uh, Jim would like to speak to. Good evening. Uh, the importance of tonight is um, the step in the ride process that allows for the reimbursement. Uh, the town of North Kingston qualified through this bond for a 43 percent reimbursement rate. Um, according to the way the bond was written, it would be the duty of the town council to award the, bond, uh, the award the contract to draw off the bond. But what is needed to get the reimbursement is a concurrence from the facilities committee, which was given yesterday at four o'clock and also the, the, uh, a positive vote from the school committee. And we're looking at, for this work alone, a little over $2 million of reimbursement that could be used to pay down the, uh, the borrowed money related to the bond. So hopefully it'll be found supportive tonight. All right, so we're being asked for a motion to concur with the town council decision to authorize the contractor and also to accept reimbursement from RIDE. So moved. Second. <coughs> so, so are there any questions? Mr. Mudge. The, uh, <coughs> what was the reimbursement from the state? Uh, 43 percent. 43 percent. Yes. That's because we caught it in that window where the couple years we had, used to be 30, and this fell under the 40 percent window, which I'm not sure. As part of the uh, ride submission, Mr. Patrick might be better to answer this, but um, the decision when we got the, the uh, final decision from ride, everything related to this file would be at 43 percent. And yeah. I believe that's paid out over a period of 10 years on the reimbursement. Uh, I do have 
a question that this goes back to was the fact that uh, I certainly disagree with some of the things that were being presented under the bond. And I understand Whitford Middle, it's no problem with that and so forth and so on. But I have had some problems with the, uh, I just want to go on the record saying that, about the uh, uh, safety items that we talked about and the items re related to uh, ADA requirements. Did anybody ever inspect our building to find out what our safety issues were, number one? And two, did anyone ever contact the Governor's Commission on Disabilities with regard to the work we're doing in here to satisfy the ADA contract? Uh, first of all, we, we did contact uh, the Governor's Commission on ADA and reviewed all of the pieces relative to the, the, the life safety part of the project, not necessarily WICFIT, but all of the items that were scheduled to be modified. Did, did, did they confirm that the, by law that these things had to be accomplished? Yes. They did. They we did. have that in writing? We have a report that basically reviews what okay. we are presenting uh, for the summer, and they basically. Because I certainly, I was. Mr. Partridge finished. I, I was, yeah, I had disagreed with that because I had read the law, mm -hmm. and if I have and, and I'm mistaken, I'll apologize, but I still stand by the fact that some of the work being done, for example, I found out just recently as part of this contract, we have an elevator going into at least one school an ADA candidate for Davisville Middle School. And, in fact, we have an elevator there. It's a rail elevator that goes down from one area to another and so forth. Correct. And that elevator, from what I understand, uh, is quite old, the mechanism system, and that, uh, in fact, uh, 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 apparently it's, it, they, get, they get responded to, according to the principal there, when they have a problem, but uh, until somebody shows up, it's pretty difficult to have a kid move from, you know, a child from upstairs or down, whatever. But my, my, my comment was there, we have a system in place, and I'm asking, why are we, you know, blowing a hole through a floor, the floor in that building and putting a vertical elevator in when we could just change out the mechanisms and use a regular rail system for probably substantially less cost? True. Probably but, tens of thousands of dollars. Right. But true. But the code, um, you have to provide an accessible route, and that accessible route has to be in a path that a person can use the route without being assisted to use the route. And that's, that's the issue with an inclined wheelchair lift, is that it takes two people to actually use it, one to actually you know, ride in it, but another person to actually push a button to be able to get the person up. The other issue with the inclined wheelchair lift is it's taking away from the accessible route out of the building in terms of the stair width because you have the rails that is actually inside the stair path, which is sort of an obstruction in terms of... So for all these years, we've had a violation, code Let violation? Let Mr. Partridge finish, Mr. Mudge. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So, yeah, in a sense, you did have that. Well, see, but nobody ever told us we had a code violation. Excuse me, um, you know, Ms. Page, so if you could please stop this inquisition. I, I think these gentlemen worked, worked very hard and very long on this, and to have you st sit there, Mr. Mudge, and, and, and treat them like they're under oath and in, in a court of law is pretty disparaging to the work that they've, those gentlemen have done. Well, I happen to represent the taxpayers of North Kingston as well, and I've, I've echoed these before, and that's why I asked them, have they been certified? And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll admit they're not wrong. Because Start admitting. A, lot, a lot of this work before and the past, we have a lousy track record in this town of investing school taxpayers' money. We spent $3 million or $2.5 million on Davis Elementary School four years ago, and two, two years Mr. later Mudge. we closed the school. So we need to have the scrutiny. We need to spend the taxpayers' right, money wisely. Emotional... We need to think about what we're doing, Mr. which Mudge, we don't do. There has been much scrutiny given to this whole discussion at many meetings that these gentlemen have gone to, and at many times when they have inspected <coughs> the buildings and checked the codes. What? And so if you would like to speak to them at some other time, but I think there's a motion on the floor and there is a second. I have one and final question, the questions question, we're please. starting to ask okay. are outside of the scope of the motion. We put so in, we're, I'm we're, ask we're putting you. a rug in uh, Davisville, uh, Quinescent. Did we fix the floor? Did we have any problems with water coming up through the floor? 
you do, you do um, but part of the carpet installation is we're actually putting a vapor retarder system over the top of the slab to prevent water migration up through the existing slab that currently is. is that in the whole floor then? We have a, we have a. You have it every, pretty much everywhere we have carpets, which is about 90% of the floor area of the building, the existing building. So the, the, the we do have a, a, a what is that vapor? Is Point that of order, Mrs. Water Page. Yes, Mrs. Avanzato. Uh, I appreciate some of the questions Mr. Mudge is asking, but I have attended several facilities subcommittee meetings. There have been meetings for a long, long time on a lot of these issues, and those are really the, that's the appropriate forum to ask the detailed questions like this. Um, that would be my point of order. I think we should stick the com uh, have the conversation stick to the motion. Okay. Um, I'll sustain that. Is there any other questions that we would like to ask? Um, yes, Mrs. Avanzato. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Bergeron and to the Facilities Subcommittee and to you, Mr. Partridge. I, I know a lot of time and effort and work has gone into this. Some of the, you know, uh, code requirements, you can look at them and we can argue all day long that we don't agree with every single one of them, but we, we have, especially since we're now constructing, we must abide by them and we have to, some that we may not entirely agree with. But I know a lot of very careful detail has been paid um, also to cost, because I've been at the meetings and I've seen that work done, like really trying to keep the cost down. So uh, I just wanted to say thank you. And, and Mr. Boscarden briefed me on what's been happening recently, so I appreciate that work. Mr. Jones. Um, thank you. Um, sort of obviously defer to the expertise and the work that's been done in this area. Um, so just for my own uh, education, um, so based on your analysis of the project, where, where do you see a sort of one, two areas that would most worry you about this getting done on time? Um, and then are there anything in the contract or with the with the with the uh, with the contractor about um, certain deadlines and stuff, you know, and I guess what I'm talking about is a way that, you know, we can, since we don't really meet over the summer, you know, have a way of, of getting little milestones and checklists to say, you know, cool, and, and then ultimately maybe have a video so we can, people in town can see the work going on. Obviously, we have a concern uh, because there is a lot of work being done over the summer. Uh, and it's the reason we sat with each of the individual contractors, and in this case Monday with the low bidder, to ensure he fully understood the scope, that he had the subcontractors that could perform the work, especially the mechanical subcontractors because of the amount of that type of work that's being done. <clears throat> in addition, there are liquidated damages at the end of the project. If he doesn't complete on time, he's charged $1,000 a day, something to that effect, even though $1,000 a day doesn't mean a lot when you're delaying school, and we understand that. Um, but in addition, we are, are planning on meeting twice a week with project meetings in order to keep the project moving. Um, I was also able to get a project contingency approved by the council last night of 7% for both funding sources, which allows us through the town manager to make timely decisions on any kind of change order, unforeseen field conditions that are encountered uh, so that we can keep the project moving. There are a couple concerns and I mean it's not a perfect world. Something could happen with the elevator delivery but there are ways and Jim can talk to this better than I can about getting the building open on time and perhaps finishing the punch list items that may still uh, still exist at the end of the project after hours, on weekends, or on vacation. So those are the contingency plans we put in place. But yes, we've, we've done what we think we, we have to in order to on time. So, so you'd say the mechanical stuff is maybe, you know, you think like in a PERT stuff or and all that kind of stuff, like, like where's the, you know, the real critical points that you would really worry about? Well, the, the key issue here is going to be prioritization and getting a proper um, schedule, construction schedule off of them immediately and that, that was stressed to every one of the bidders during the scope reviews. Uh, the priority would be to first work in all of the areas that affect student activities when the students are there. If there are things such a, that have to be prioritized, if work can be isolated to within say a, a boiler room 
and performed off hours, if the students come back, it would have uh, a substantially lessened uh, effect on the uh, day-to-day the -day activities of the students. But one of the key things that we did is we actually went beyond scoping and interviewing the general contractor. We got into their individual subcontractors, their abilities to man the job, um, their past histories, uh, past town projects. Uh, both my, myself and Mark are, are in that particular uh, trade, knowing how how well different companies act um, and interwork with the uh, production schedules. Uh, we got into their existing workload that would be running concurrent with this project mm -hmm. to make sure that no matter what size the company was, that they weren't overbooking and overloading. Uh, as well as the biweekly meetings and making sure that they're adhering to their projected schedules and, and being able to police and monitor if they fall off those schedules um, with a, with a biweekly meeting, you, you can react to it within two days and you can monitor it basically every two days to see if there's compliance. But every contractor we talked to was talking about a substantial amount of overtime. Uh, one of the largest two shifts, uh, seven days a week, and one of the largest concerns that we heard from all three contractors had to do with the ability to get into Davisville Middle after the asbestos work was done. And by removing that component, it really seemed to uh, alleviate everyone's greatest concern. That, that really was a big delay, and I think by removing that component, it added yeah, three weeks. It, it gave them of additional time to get their work done. Great. No, thank you. And thank you for all your due diligence and the work you're doing. Mr. Buscardi. Thank you, Ms. Page. I just wanted to um, thank you fellows for all your hard work. I mean, I, I've been very fortunate uh, to sit with you guys at this facility subcommittee meetings. And I have to tell you, I've never uh, been involved with a finer group of guys. You guys know what you're talking about. You're detailed uh, to the nth degree. And um, I apologize for some of the questions that was going on here that appeared to be to me, I'm um, just grandstanding because if those questions really were of concern, they would have been at one of our subcommittee meetings and be able to talk to you. So thank you so much for your hard work. I appreciate, I really appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Dr. Roger. I just want to reiterate what has already been said. I, I truly appreciate the work that you've put in. You know, we have been blessed that the taxpayers have supported us for $6.4 million to get this work done and, and for the previous bond that's going to help us at Wickford. But without a team of people with your expertise and commitment, um, it's hard to make all of this happen. It is enormous work um, at, at a certain point. I like the idea of videotaping some of the work and, and, and making the community aware of just how much is going to be going on in our schools this summer. Um, and uh, and you, you deserve a lot of the credit for that because uh, it's very difficult to get from A to Z in this bond process and you have stuck in there and we certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, I would reiterate that. Just thank you all very much for all your time. So, seeing no other hands, Lorraine, why don't we take a roll call vote? Okay, and the motion is to concur with the Town Council's position to authorize the contractor and accept <coughs> reimbursement from Ride. <coughs> Linda Avanzano. Yes. John Viscardin. Yes. Larry Cerisi. Yes. Cheryl Clarkin. Yes. Robert Jones. Yes. William Mudge. Yes, with exceptions. Kimberly Page. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That brings us back to the the, um, the agenda. Um, I, I know we're going to have we have our we have our budget votes tonight, and so I, I know that we have some people who have come to to speak about the budget, and um, and because of that, Dr. Oje has asked that we um, let him go over his budget um, proposals because he has a couple things to say before um, citizens' comments. So would the committee indulge him in doing that? Sure. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for coming out tonight, everyone. Um, I just want to, um, to point out that I, I have um, a budget proposal tonight that I put in writing for the school committee, and it is available on the web page. Um, but I'm going to um, veer from it a little bit. I'm almost going to be making a couple of amendments to my own proposal tonight. So um, if you'd indulge me, I'd like to go over some of the details of that. Um, as you know, the, the school 
uh, well, you may not know, but I'm going to tell you right now. The local funding that we requested was $45,788,000. And the local funding that was approved by the town council was $45,338,25. The total uh, reduction that we are responsible for at this point is $458,000 from where we previously left off in our budgeting. What I am proposing tonight is a couple of things that I would uh, hope that the school committee would support. And this is based on working with uh, my administrative team, with um, Mary King, who is not available tonight, um, but I'm sure she's listening in right now. Um, <laughs> and, um, and also in meeting with many of you on the side, uh, talking about you know your thoughts on this and what you would feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to to get to all of that, and I think I have a solution that uh, I think many of you would uh, be happy to live with. First, I hope to use um, the $228,000 that is back payroll account adjustment money. And as you all know, this is something that has recently been realized in our, our recent audit. And, um, and it was, in the thinking of the town council vote, it was um, considered uh, the easiest place to find a reduction because it was money that we didn't necessarily know we were going to have, and we recently found out we were going to get it. So um, even though I have some misgivings, as you, uh, we've had this conversation a million times on the stage about using uh, money that would go to fund balance for operational spending, I feel in this case, uh, cutting an additional $228,000 from the budget would be so detrimental that in this case it's worth doing it. I also, as you know, am working on, and I'll have more information on this for you on the 28th, a proposal for not next year but the following school year in which we um, use Davisville Elementary School to, um, to help us with our alternative learning programs and to save some money. And that's going to be something that involves a lot of upfront costs and some operational spending. And I feel that it would be appropriate at that point to, you know, once again, we're going to have to reintroduce that $228,000. And I think that would be the point to do it. And we have a year to kind of see it coming, and we can plan for it appropriately. I would also, if you um, look at my proposal, numbers 1 through 16 include, and I'm gonna, not going to go through all of these in, in a lot of detail, but they include things like um, appropriating building use funds from restricted funds, claims and settlements. A lot of these items I'm sure a lot of the public doesn't really even know a heck of a lot about, and they're not necessarily things that people would notice right away. And in some cases, it's basically just tightening our belt. Restrictions on in need a higher threshold on my approvals to, to do some work. That would include the equipment that we purchased. That would include maintenance and supplies, building improvements, technology-related supplies. We, we had some money in um, NEASC based on what they may be asking us to do once the NEASC visit is done. That is something that we could possibly do in the following year. And we're not sure that we would need it. It was just kind of there in the event that they, they usually ask you to do some work on your buildings. Um, it would include district-wide stipends for clubs. It would include some athletic supplies. It would include auditing fees, um, some electricity, and that part is kind of a gamble in that we're hoping that the rate will stay where we expect, but, you know, um, so, and general supplies. And that takes us a good part of the way. What I then listed was some staffing adjustments. And as you know from my last presentation, I'm very worried about the state of our alternative learning programs, and I'm looking to do something with them two years from now at Davisville Elementary. But in the meantime, I've been doing some reordering. These are things that I feel we have to do based on special education needs and particularly on higher, uh, highly qualified uh, mandates from Department of Education. These have been in place for some time now, and we have not been in compliance, and we recently had a visit, a review from the Department of Education, 
on this issue. And what this basically means is that a student um, who has special needs but is taking the kneecap regular test, which will soon become the park regular test, that that student is responsible to pass the state test to graduate. And therefore, they need a highly qualified teacher in that subject to teach them. So they can't simply have a special educator teaching them if, it, if the subject at the secondary level is math or science or English or social studies. They have to have a special education teacher and a regular education teacher who is certified in that subject area, who is aware of the requirements uh, to graduate uh, on the NECAP or PARC test, which is coming, and would be there to help guide the student. And that is a need that we have as part of this package. That accounts for alone those ads, roughly $300,000. What I was looking to do originally was to cut, eliminate 1.8 librarians eliminate 0.5 FTEs and high school electives. And as you know, over the past few years, these areas have gotten banged up pretty significantly. And it's not that I don't feel these are areas that are important. The trouble that I have when it comes to reducing staff is that sometimes these are the only two areas that become available. Um, and they're not so available anymore, and I'm hoping to save them. After talking with all of you, I feel it would be more appropriate to take this, the 1% that we have set aside for our union negotiations. It's $156,000. That doesn't mean that we would not end with a 1% offer. Uh, there's a lot of negotiating still to do. But there are a number of factors that are still in play, namely $93,000 in, in state aid that we believe will come through if the governor gets his way with his budget. And also, we're still negotiating. So there may be some, some negotiation um, uh, you know, uh, agreements that find us some savings in other areas. And um, if, you know, through the negotiation, if we end up with a one, maybe it will become affordable with some, uh, in, by some other means. And by the way, that also was part of the town council justification for that $156,000. There were two areas uh, where we, we experienced cuts, and one was the 156 and one was the 228. And for those reasons, that the town took a zero this year and managed to do a pay increase even with that zero. So they felt that setting aside 156 for that purpose, um, you know, would be an area that they could hold us accountable as well. So with that in mind, what I am looking to do is everything on, on the sheet except for the elimination of 1.8 librarians and the 0.5 FTE in high school electives. And that's a total of $211,000. And substituting that with the $156,000 in set aside, that leaves us with $55,000 left to cut. And I would ask that I would have until May 28th to come back to you, maybe talk with you some more, and, and include Mary King in the discussion as well, because she was away when I was kind of having these discussions with you originally to talk about what would be the best way to do this. It would also give us a few weeks to see if anything should occur with the, um, with the governor's proposal, and to see if um, that $93,000 is any more likely to materialize and how that may play into the mix. We have until the end of June, so we have three more school committee meetings to make this final uh, piece. So I'm, I'm asking you for a couple of things. One, I think this requires a separate vote, that we would vote to reappropriate the fund balance in the total of $228,000, that you would accept my proposal reducing the staffing cuts and including substituting that with $156,000 based on that 1% set aside and allowing me to come back to you on the 28th or at a later date for the remaining $55,000. Mr. Cerisi. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Just uh, one quick note. 
that I'd uh, like to make is that I think the, uh, the superintendent outlined the appropriations uh, from the funding appropriations from the town council um, and as far as uh, where the uh, shortfalls may lie I, I just wanted to uh, publicly thank the town council I, I think that they were very diligent and fair in their budget process and in their allocations to the school department um, this year um, and I will make the first motion to <coughs> authorize um, the two hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars from fund balance to be reappropriated uh, point of order second point of order do we have some other discussions here before we go into these items regarding some of the numbers? Because uh -huh. it may have may have an impact on some of the votes, I believe. You can still make the motion, and then you can, um, but before the motion is taken, yes, you may comment. Oh. Uh, so I, I believe the point of order, though, is we allow the superintendent to move forward in the agenda items, but we're still, but I thought we were going to allow citizens' comments after. Hmm. We can still allow citizens' comments before, before we take a vote. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's actually more helpful for citizens to, to hear us de deliberate, then have the chance to comment and reflect back on what we said in case we're off the mark with something. But I guess, see, yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused, Madam Chair, because uh, I know what the council appropriated. What, what I'd like to do is get a number of what's the budget going to be? What is the budget? Because the revenues don't really mean anything. The town council of appropriates a budget that we can or cannot exceed. They don't appropriate and plus they have to account for, we have to account for revenues obviously. But right now we have a budget of well we, our budget we submitted of fifty eight million eight sixty five was reduced by was it four hundred thousand or three hundred and eighty thousand by the council. I don't have that number in front of me here. Well we but this but, I think what the superintendent is trying to decide is how to use the 45,330,825 that the council has appropriated us. He is not trying to change any appropriations on anything else from um, grant funding or from, um, from federal funding. I understand, but see, if we're going to, if we're going to appropriate uh, monies on appropriate monies. Back, in other words, we have an appropriation number of 58 million something, okay? Is that number going to change? Because if that number changes and we appropriate monies back in, it must go to the town council to re, you know, redo the budget. If, for example, if the motion on the table is to take the 228 that we have currently in the um, fund balance and to change it to the general fund. Well, again, I would say that that's fine, but what we'd have to do is we'd have to vote on that, then it would have to go back to the council to amend the budget to reflect that. No. Okay. It yes, really it does would. Not. It is just merely using our fund balance for things that we want to spend it on. But they haven't appropriated and allowed you to do that yet. You've got to, you've got to change your revenue stream to match your expenditures. We're taking this is one of those points that we disagree on, Mrs. Avanzato. Well, obviously, Mary King is not here tonight, but um, Mary Ann, do you have any input on this? The town council appropriated you a bottom line figure of a certain amount of money. By your putting, you're actually going to be spending more than that bottom line figure by using your fund balance. So your bottom line figure is actually going to be more than what was appropriated by the town. So you're agreeing with Mr. But Mike? I am, but I'm but wasn't that a discussion with the town that you would use the that money? I mean wasn't that the intent of cutting you that amount of money? Yeah. I mean I think it yeah. might just be a formality. It was just like when the state that was the rationale. Right. I, I think it's a formality, mm -hmm. but I think Mr. Mudge is right, right because you're going to actually be spending <coughs> more Increases than the what budget they by that amount. Yeah, the total what budget. I was concerned about was are there, how will all these other things fit in here because we need to know what that, that amount has to go up to at the end. Can we make what, the motion contingent on, on approval of, or reappropriation or amending of the budget by the town council? I, I'll withdraw my motion and I'll reword it that we, we request from the council to appropriate $228,000 
from the school committee's fund balance. Second. There's a motion on the floor, and it's open for discussion. All right. Uh, I, yes, Mr. Buscoden. I, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to what Dr. Auger said about the, um, mm -hmm. the $228,000, how he realizes it, it's not protocol, it's not the way we normally do business, but it's important that we do it this year. What happens next year? That's my concern. What happens next year when that whatever this 228000 is going to get appropriated to this year comes due? I mean, we're, 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 we're robbing Peter to feed Paul. Well, you know, it, it, is, it is an issue, you know, that um, when, when we look at what we would be getting from an increase uh, or if we get an increase from the town next year, that we would have to factor in uh, what we normally do and $228,000. Like I said, my feeling is that um, there are a number of, of projects that I would like to take on, one of them being uh, the Davisville School. Um, and that will require some additional operational money. Um, if I were to propose this, uh, do nothing now with our ALPs and propose this next year, my proposal next year would be for $228,000 more to get that particular staff at that time. Um, the only thing I feel that we lose, um, you know, or, or that by, by not doing this this year is that I cannot make any moves with that ALP staff this year and, and students would lose out and not to mention we, we would not be um, following, you know, what is uh, appropriate and mandatory for our special education students. So, um, so I feel like one way or the other, it's $228,000 we're going to have to account for next year regardless. And, and I feel that this is, you know, as the town council said, it's money that we didn't know was coming. Um, we do have it, um, and we need it. And therefore, um, and I don't feel that it is such an exorbitant <clears throat> amount that it is going to sh overly stress us. Like, I, I wouldn't do this with, say, $2 million, but $228,000, I feel comfortable that we can make the uh, you know adjustments we need to make next year to uh, set this back uh, on the right course all right Lorraine could you call a roll call vote please John Biscardin no Larry Cerisi yes Gerald Clarkin yes Robert Jones yes William Mudge yes Kimberly Page yes Linda Avanzano Yes. Thank you. Motion passes six to one. Mr. Stracy. I know there's still um, more discussion to have and possibly some questions as well, but just to get, get a motion on the table, I'd like to make a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation for the uh, budget reductions and, and balancing the, uh, the budget proposal. Second. <clears throat> All right. Discussion. Mr. Buscarton. Um, on number 15, the electricity, Dr. Auger, uh, that to me is a real craft shoot. We really don't know from one quarter to the next what, what the uh, rates are going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering how, how if, if there's a spike in, uh, in the um, kilowatt hours from National Grid, how, how do we... Um, make up for that you know this was um, this was a recommendation of the budget subcommittee to us and you know I, I'm not disagreeing with you mr. Briscard and I do believe there's a certain element here that that we have um, as a crapshoot and, and perhaps maybe someone from the budget subcommittee may want to talk about this um, I think in in some of these cases that um, particularly you know uh, can I tell you exactly in every line you know uh, what is going to be reduced, not necessarily. I think it's one of those issues where one way or another we're going to have to make it work. And, um, and this part of it is kind of wishful thinking. Um, but, you know, if we don't see it come to 32, we're going to have to figure it out along the way, and, and, and we will. Mr. Jennings. Um, thank you. So, uh, uh, so John, the, the first point, so I, I know in the budget, so there's two parts with the electricity. So having 
signed a new contract last year, the, the kilowatt hour rate is fixed for three years. So the issue is going to be the transmission charge, you know, which gets changed, I think, every six months. So, so you're right to that extent, and I think Mary has talked about, you know, there's, there's a little bit of, of risk with that, that fluctuating. Right. The, the 32,000 came from uh, going back to November when the previous committee approved the new three, I think it's a three-year rate with um, Constellation. Um, and there was a projection that that new rate for the remaining eight or so months would save 86,000. And so taking that analysis from Mary and projecting it forward is where we arrived at the 32,000. So obviously, you know, it's a crapshoot to the extent of you say, well, this year's rate and usage mirror next year's rate, you know, will, will it be hotter, colder, and the things that, that use electricity and, and obviously our own due diligence. And, you know, I don't know if we're paying for electricity with the summer work and that kind of stuff. But, um, <clears throat> but I mean, there was some thought put behind it. Uh, but I, I would guess to, to get to your larger point, though, I agree. You know, I see this as two separate things. So having approved the 228, you know, you have the immediate issue of to get to the 458 number that the council has adjusted us. So that's, you know, 230,000. You know, 1 through 16 is a cut of 316,000. So, you know, I, I could see one thing this committee takes, which is taking a step back and saying, okay, so maybe what are things we want to put back or hedge on or wait a couple weeks to think more about you know, that gets us to 230 and then take, you know, the suggestion that was made and look at the superintendent's, you know, proposed changes, you know, the second half of this and betting that more in two weeks because, I mean, I know for one, um, you know, I'm not comfortable cutting any librarians and I know Dr. Oje's just, you know, addressed an alternate way of doing that, but, you know, I sort of see it as two distinct phases. So, you know, do, do we want to, you know, take all of 1 through 16 or go back and quickly look at each one individually and maybe take a few off the table for a couple weeks, you know, and get to just to 230-ish so, we, you know, we're in compliance for now and then revisit, you know, some of this more fully in, in two weeks as another strategy. You know, for example, I really, you know, am loathe to kind of cut, even though it's a small amount, you know, professional development if maybe there's another place to find $4,500 somewhere. So um, it's a long answer to, to your question, but Mr. thank Susie. you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I would concur with uh, with Mr. Jones. I think there is, is two separate steps here, and the first being the, the, the vote that we just took to uh, re, re, uh, request the reappropriation of that 228000 I think that's step one. Um, and I think step two is, is looking at the recommendations for the additional reductions to bring us down to where we need to be. Um, I certainly don't want the committee to be seen as, uh, you know, sitting on its hands or kicking the can down the road. But as uh, Dr. Roger had, had mentioned, we, we do still have several meetings remaining before we have to make some uh, final decisions and have a final number. Um, so, you know, if the committee so wishes, I, I'm fully um, willing to withdraw my motion and the committee can have more discussion on these recommendations uh, and more opportunity to uh, meet with the superintendent and uh, Mrs. King before our next meeting. Um, and hopefully be ready to vote at our next meeting, uh, whatever the committee feels most comfortable with. Certainly, uh, you know, I don't want to sit on our hands, but it's not a uh, must that these some of these decisions be made this evening. I saw um, b um, bills, but before that, Dr. Jay would like to say something. Um, I, I appreciate um, both of the remarks. Um, thank you. You know, I, I would ask um, that for items 1 through 16, um, that you do take a vote tonight. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily feel that anyone would feel very strongly about one as opposed to the other, but again, you know, as Mr. Cerise said, we do have three more meetings, 
and we will not be done. We're going to have at least $55,000 left to account for, and we're going to have to uh, make a decision given the governor's um, budget. So we're going to have to revisit this. But I, I do feel it's important to kind of uh, get the ball rolling, um, put this out there, uh, establish what we would like to do with the staffing piece tonight. And that doesn't mean that over the next few weeks we can't have more discussions. Um, I, like I said, I appreciate the discussions that we have had and, and the suggestions that people have made. Um, I guess I'm just asking that, you know, this has been something that I have labored over long and hard with my administrative team, and I'm letting you know as superintendent that I can get the mission done of this district with these cuts. Um, and I would prefer to do it with the staffing adjustments for the reasons that I put together. Um, that doesn't mean that in a couple of weeks people may not have a certain epiphany or try a different strategy and make an adjustment that they can't suggest on the 28th or one of the June meetings. That would be fine with me. But I think just to kind of get something established here, um, I would hope for a, a vote on those items and on the staffing items tonight. Great. I see uh, Mr. Mudge's hand and Mr. Cerisi's and Mrs. Avanzato. <clears throat> Let's, let, let's take a step backwards, at least from my perspective, because I want to make sure I know where we're going. Dr. O'Shea, I guess you, your intent is, <clears throat> is to get the funding authority from the town back to the $58,865,000 that we submitted to the council. No. No? No. Well, they, I know that they cut the 458 from that, but this school committee sent a budget, okay, to the council of 58865 So are we asking more or less than that than we originally, originally requested from the town? Well, as you know, I mean, we just took the vote on the fund balance. So that, that piece is, is settled. Um, the, but not really. Not, so, right. Well. That's what I'm trying to account for. Yeah. The, so what I am looking to do is to get us to within $55,000, considering the 228 uh, added to, to this, of, you know, balancing the budget with the 228 included. But and what I'm suggesting is that starting on the 28th, we would get uh, to the point of the other $55,000 and also possibly make adjustments once the governor's uh, budget comes in. That's a $93,000 number. Right. So, as I understand it, then, I, it looks like, essentially, I won't say, you know, down to the last 50000 but essentially, right now, if we wanted to get back to the, the budget that we submitted to the council, <coughs> we need $230,000 in total. We need $230,000. Well, if we want to get back to the number that we, again, well, submitted to the council. Yes, and, and you know, I, I understand your point, no. but what, you know, what has evolved over the course of the year, um, in my mind, you know, through the review from special education and just through seeing how our ALP programs are working out, um, I feel that these, this need for the, you know, almost 300000 302000 in in the ALP staff that I mentioned to you has become a very significant need here and that it's not something that I feel like we can live without and, and, and put a responsible budget in front of you. So, you know, um, and I think it's something that we have to have some consideration of as we, as we move forward with budgeting that we, supply, we put something together as early as, you know, the middle of the winter and, and five months later, um, you know, different needs kind of evolve. And I apologize that I wasn't able to, to kind of front load this and, and have it in mind for everyone to consider earlier, but I do feel it's something that, that is needed and it's part of the rationale for the 228. So. So I, I don't have a problem with that, Dr. Uche, but see, what I'm trying to understand is, it's, uh, are, you, are you suggesting then that this 228K we didn't originally have in the budget we sent to the town council, the 58865000 eight sixty-five. 
This is over and above that, then? That's, that's the appropriation of the fund balance. Yes, it increases okay, the so, budget amount. Okay, so I'm, I'm still trying to work back to the, the 58 million, you know, 865, okay? And what we're saying is, is regarding trying to fund all of those things, we still need to raise, if we were, we'd still need to raise five four $458,000. Two hundred thirty. No, because he's using the two twenty-eight to do something that wasn't in the budget. No. Originally. No. no. I don't think so. I, I think well, when he that was see, that's why I was trying to work backwards. Okay. I, I, what what I think that first mo I think what Dr. Ajay is trying to do is between what they requested of the town council and what the town council approved, there was a cut of four hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. He's trying to make up some of that $458 by adding back something that you have in fund balance, which is that $228,000 which you just approved. Right. So you were right in your first statement by saying, so now the budget is going, the, the, what he's going to spend is more than what he's got approved by, mm -hmm. by that amount. Right. So now what he has to do in order for those two numbers to balance, what he originally wanted and what he's now going to spend, he has to make another cut of a total of $230,000. Right. That's right. right. We'd have to, so we've got to, to make, cut. If, right. right. So we've got to cut $230,000. In addition to that, though, now say I'm, trying, I'm trying to look at this all the way down, but in actuality, if we get the 90000 from the state, we're talking 140000 only. But you see, what I'm trying to work my way back up to is what budget number are we going to give the council? You I, know what I'm saying? From what you brought up at the beginning a little while ago, what, what you're going to have to do is that the, the council is appropriating a certain amount of money. You're basically asking to use, in addition to their appropriation, part of your fund balance of 228000 sure. Yep. which, again, shouldn't be an issue because I believe that was brought up and that's what the town intended for you to fill in with, that 228000 So I don't think that's an issue. I think that's a formality, Mr. Mudge. Ultimately, what we're going to be asking for from the town is the local funding that they've already approved, the $45,330,825, and the reappropriation of that fund balance money for $228,000. That's what we're asking from the town. All right. I saw Mrs. Avanzato's hand and then Mr. Jones' hand. Mrs. Avanzato, pass for a moment and let Mr. Jones speak first. If um, okay. Thank you, Mrs. Avanzato. Um, I, I, get, I guess my concern is, um, and if we if we approve 1 through 16, so now we've sort of put ourselves into, you know, having a, having a little flex because that's going to put us – you know, 86,000 um, to the good. Hopefully the town council won't take it back. Just kidding. Um, but the, um, but my concern is that, well, you know, we, you know, I appreciate Dr. Oje's discussion and, and the conversations he's had with us on, on, you know, some priorities he'd like to see in the, in the, those areas. Um, I'd like to at least wait to have a discussion to discuss priorities that maybe some of the council members or committee members might have that we'd like to see compete for potentially a finite amount of, of resources um, and, and give those an opportunity to either be vetted and or find other areas to, to resource those or, or make a, you know, a decision two weeks from now on, you know, what priorities um, are going to get funded uh, going forward for fiscal year 14, and I just think that, you know, it's it's not a big ask to say wait two weeks and allow the committee members to, to present some other ideas and other priorities, um, which I think some members of the community have as well. Mrs. Aventaro. A couple of uh, general comments. I want to thank the budget subcommittee and in particular Mr. Jones for, for his suggestions where he went through our budget uh, pretty closely and came up with, um, you know, several suggestions that are included here. So that's great um, when committee members can brainstorm and come up with some things. 
Um, in terms of voting tonight on these, as the superintendent has suggested, I, th I like to usually vote on these things over two meetings, but I think that the, the uh, community is pretty well aware of what's on the list, and I think that he's asking us to vote tonight. With respect to the comments made about the ALP and what um, the superintendent is asking for us to vote on tonight in terms of ads in the special education area, um, it's, it's known to those of us on the school committee that there are some significant difficulties going on in some of the schools with, with issues like this, that we're trying to deal with the situation before it impacts um, the, the, uh, all the students' education. And it appears that it needs to be addressed now from what I've been hearing. We've been hearing that for months now. We've had discussions um, with uh, Patty Pizzullo and others, and I'm, I'm concerned about waiting on that. I think if the superintendent says it's urgent, and we have reason to know it's urgent already from several other sources, um, I'm not willing to wait on voting on that one. We've already voted on that one, though. Um, the 228? No. No, not oh, the I'm taking part in that. I thought the 230. Those particular positions. We did I vote on the 228, yeah. Okay. Yep. That's, what I, that's what I thought you were referring to. No. But, um, and I understand in terms of, you know, getting committee members input, and we can always reinstate some of these cuts down the road or, or swap out, or, but I, I feel we need to work, we need to move forward on those in particular, the staffing, because it's been discussed for six months now. There are significant issues at some of the schools that have been brought to my attention for one. So, okay, I see Mr. Best Garden. I see Mr. Does see your hand, Mrs. Clarkin? Mrs. I saw I, Mr. Best Garden, Mrs. Clarkin. Um, I'd like to say something, and I did see Mr. Jones. So, um, I'll say something first, so that I can fit prerogative of the chair. Uh, yeah. Um, so one of the things I think I would say is on the some of these special educators, uh, the one, as we see here, the 1.6 is right, mandated by the Department of Education. We've been told we need to add a position to make sure that we're, um, what is the specific term that is being used? Highly, highly. Uh, high, um, highly qualified. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I would fully support that. I like the superintendent's um, suggestion here because I think that we have all at one point expressed that we do not want to be um, cutting in the librarians some more. Um, and what I would say is that I have encouraged you, everyone, over the last two weeks to be speaking to the superintendent about your, your cuts. And so we vote on this tonight. We get something in there. If there's something very specific that you want to swap out, then you can go and see the superintendent and, and speak to him. Because this is, he is the person who runs the schools. He gives us where he sees us as best. And then we can vote it up or down. If he thinks your idea has good merit, then you bring it to him, and if he puts it forward to us, we can swap it for something else. It's not as if we have um, to have everything um, by June 30th. I mean, we have to have everything by June 30th, but if we take this now, at least we'll be mostly of the way there. All right, so that was not too eloquent. Mr. Busgarden. <laughs> you said it. It was all right. I understood it. <laughs> and I have to respectfully disagree. I think that... Um, and it's just 180, we're just looking at it from 180 degrees uh, apart. I think that to do the one through 16 is, is fine. Um, since we're not under the gun, uh, why don't we hold off on the staffing adjustments and um, just table them uh, for the next meeting? It'll give us um, a little more time. Because quite frankly, um, you know, and it's nobody's fault but my own, but I haven't had a ample opportunity to, to, to find things that uh, I would like to do other than this, um, with the exception of the, uh, the ride highly qualified teacher mandate, I have no problem approving that tonight. Um, but I, I, I know I'm, uh, when, I, when I speak like this, I know that it kind of, uh, it puts me, in, you know, it makes me sound old. But I, I realize kids don't, learn, they learn differently today, and maybe libraries and brick, brick and mortar libraries are not what they once were. However, I mentioned this last year, I have an affinity for libraries. I think libraries are an integral part of, of a child's development and learning and the way they learn, um, the way they learn to research. And uh, yes, I know that you know, a lot of things are found on the internet and we had the discussion, Mrs. Page, that you know, kids need to know how to use a uh, search engine and how to look at, at, at uh, 
reference data and find out what's credible and what's not. And, um, and I think that's a, an important part of, uh, at least if it isn't, I'm sure it will be an important part of how libraries function today. Um, like I said, I love libraries. I, I wish I could spend more time in them. I have a lot of good memories from sitting in a library and just getting lost in a book. Um, so I, I, am, I would love to be able to, to walk out here tonight knowing that we've been able to um, at least um, postpone the, that portion of our decisions until a later date. Uh, Mrs. Clarkin. So um, I have a couple of thoughts when I, when I look this over, and I have um, sat down with the superintendent and expressed some of my um, concerns and, and issues with some of these proposals. Um, with 1 through 16, I honestly, I don't have a, a big issue with, with those. I know that um, I look at it as, you know, we're possibly cutting 316. If we only had to cut 230, you've got a difference of 86. Um, that you could maybe play around with down the line. Um, I have expressed um, to Dr. Roger that I'm completely against the elimination of the librarians in the high school elective because, um, especially with libraries, as Mr. Buscardin said, they are an integral part of learning um, for our kids. The, so I'm not, um, I'd like to either table that or put them back in. Um, I wonder if the the 55,000 we're looking for because I, I am a proponent of substituting the 1% to make up the 156,000 difference or what, around that number um, to put those two, the, the librarians and the electives back in. Um, if we're looking at $55,000 difference, if we take those steps, I wonder if, um, I know we need the, the ride high qual highly qualified teacher but I wonder if, if a portion of that 55 difference could come from one of the other four um, educators that are proposed or from some of the, you know, 1 through 16 recommendations. And those those are just my general thoughts. Okay. Yes. I, I, think, I think we're actually saying some of the same thing. I, I am also looking to take the librarians and the uh, high school off the table with, with this proposal. Okay, and, and part of one of the reasons I, I would hope for a vote on at least parts of this tonight would be because we have a group of librarians here who are anxiously awaiting to see this actually happen. And so um, I think if people are in agreement about that, um, I think that might be a part of, you know, where we could go. Um, I, I have really, you know, feel like I've, uh, we've had a really good couple of weeks in, in the discussions that I've had with many of you about this. And I do feel like uh, Mr. Jones, that you have given me some suggestions about uh, your priorities as well as mine. That was the purpose of the meetings that we had. And um, in fact, it was your priorities with Ms. Mrs. Clarkin about that 156 um, that got this ball rolling um, in terms of, you know, my thinking was that um, there may not be an appetite from the committee to use that 156. And, and therefore, Mary King and I, when we were putting this together, were thinking, well, we're just going to have to, you know, find the cuts in other places. Um, it was through these discussions and through your priorities that I realized, and I, I, I'm grateful to you for not wanting to do the staffing cuts and finding another way. And I think we can do that. So I, I'm, I'm in agreement with all of you, and, and part of my requesting um, to take some votes tonight is not to shut things down. Um, and we can, we can make adjustments to anything that you vote in tonight. Um, it just requires, you know, uh, give me a phone call, um, and I will be happy, like I did with this one, to kind of find a way to include what I feel is the, you know, the committee's um, priorities in terms of, you know, and, and negotiating them with, I don't think our priorities are all that different. Um, but just allowing me as superintendent to find a way that it's going to work and, and that we can get the mission done, um, you know, with the kinds of things that you would like to include. And, and I don't see that going away with taking a vote tonight. So, so I have Mr. Jones's hand next. I want to make sure um, I have clarify what the motion is on the table. Right now, the motion that was put on the table was to approve the superintendent's vote recommendation, which would be 1 through 16. Then on the next part, it would be 
eliminating one or two, one and two, which is That's what the, motion the, libra was yes. the, first yes. the librarians yeah. and the um, point five at the high school, and it would be then adding the three teachers assistants, the one special educator, and the one point six for content area teachers. Well, I, I, then, then I'm confused because yeah. you want you, when you say eliminate because the wording on here says elimination of one point eight FTE. Yeah. Okay. I want to eliminate the elimination. You want to remove them? I want to remove them right off of my proposal. Uh, well, what the heck are we talking about? <laughs> well, well, that was the that's 200. The motion on the table. <laughs> we're agreeing with you. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I apologize for the confusion. Yeah, that's why I wanted to clarify that the motion. The motion does. The motion takes out. Variants, okay? It takes out the staffing okay. cuts. Uh, yes. Correct. For clarity purposes, we have two motions, one for one through 16 and sure. one for the second section. If okay. you would like to, um, Mr. Sharisi is gone. He, he said to me he was leaving, so right, he can't so withdraw the motion, but you can withdraw the second, Mrs. Avanzaro. Or, 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 or suggestion is we just vote, vote the motion down and then come back and have a new motion to vote 1 through 16, which I don't think there's much objection to. And as Ms. Clarkin said, a second motion on the, the next clarification, okay. which okay. I, I think there is some some more discussion about. But if Mrs. If Mrs. Avizano draws a second, they can second, amend the motion. There is no motion on the floor. You don't, there's no second, so there's no I motion. I remove my second. Okay. So do I have a motion to approve 1 through 16? So moved. Second. second. Okay. Do we need any further comment? One quick comment. Yes. One, One thing that I would like to possibly look at, as uh, Mr. Jones said he would possibly like to look later on at the <coughs> professional development um, cut, would be the cut, the elimination of um, IQM2. Um, and, you know, it's a small amount of money, and I, and I don't know that we'll be able to do that. I'm not going to start opening the floodgates, and okay. if that happens, I, you know, I'm not going to... Um, add it back in if, if it's against your recommendation. But right now, I just want to keep that in our minds. That's all. Okay. And I, and I think that, that to let people know that it's just merely the video streaming. It's not that you, would, you wouldn't have IQM2 to go see your meeting. It's just that people wouldn't see us live. You lose, you lose the IQM2 ability to search minutes and all of no, those. No, you, you would still have that. That piece would this stay. This is just the video streaming just piece. Just the video. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. All right, Mr. Mudge, did you have your hand up about 1 through 16, the motion on the table? Uh, yeah, you know, would, would, I think what would help all these things if we had a kind of a, I wish I had my, I don't have my computer here, because I'm still trying to go back to our original budget and see what new, when we do all these machinations, what's going to be the budget we're going to send to the town council, okay? What is going to be the top line? Because, you know, there is a potential if we take off the table $250,000 for teachers' raises this year, you know, that funds all these other things. Right? Mr. Yes. Mudge, I think that the bottom line budget that you're working on right now is what was approved by the town council, the local appropriation of the $45,330,000, plus the 228. What, what do you mean by 45 million? I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the appropriate, the entire budget of 58 million 865. And I'm looking at the local funding that was. I don't care about the local funding. It doesn't make any difference. I don't have that number. I can't help. It's you. Sorry. 58 million 865, and the council chopped that by what was the number? 400 and. $458,000. So if we wanted to become whole, if we wanted to become whole and do everything we had in the plan before, which included the ALP uh, 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 initiatives, then we – well, no, I, I was under the impression that it did – Mr. Mudge, with, with the 228 included, I'm asking for these cuts. I'm going to ask – for the inclusion of numbers three through five on the staffing. And, and then we are going to have um, $55,000 left that we'll get to at a later date to get to the number you just talked about plus 228. Okay, so. That's what we're doing. So here's what I'm, I'm trying to understand. I'm thick, I'm Polish, okay? 58865 was the budget. Mm -hmm. Did that include the the ALP initiatives that you wanted originally? I thought that no, they did. No, it didn't. Okay, so 
that's a new requirement over the 865 that we sent to the town council. It won't be when we make these cuts. I don't know what 865 means. It is we, a new requirement. The, yeah. Right. So yeah, we sent the budget to the council of 865. They cut 458, and you, we're adding 228 to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. We're adding 228 to that. So from the original budget standpoint, we're talking about uh, $786,000 thereabouts from our original submittal to the council. Okay. Right, so we have a motion on the table so, to approve 1 through 16. Do we need any further discussion or are we ready to vote? Let's call the vote, please. All right, um, roll call vote, please. Cheryl Clarkin. Yes. Robert Jones. Yes. William Mudge. Yes. Kimberly Page. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. John Biscardi. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Make a motion. Thank you. So. The next part of, maybe we'll take these in chunks, the next part of Dr. Jay's um, recommendation asking. is to, I'd like to make a motion. only approve three through five. Yes, Mrs. Avanzato. I, like, I make a motion to approve three through five on the recommended staffing adjustments. Discussion. Oh, is there a second? There a second? Oh, second, okay. second. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Um, thank you. Um, I, I guess a few things. So, Ms. Salmanzano, to your point, I mean, this is fiscal year 14 money. So I, I would see your point if we were trying to solve something in the next two weeks. But, you know, obviously we're not going to be able to fund these until fiscal year 14. So I don't think two weeks is going to change that, that point. I, I guess... And so, again, I see two things. One is just a technical clarification, which I, I think I asked you, Dr. Oje. I, I don't dispute the notion that it makes sense to have a subject matter area teaching stuff. I'm confused, though, since RIDE is no longer tracking highly qualified as a, as a statistic in Rhode Island and has asked for a waiver from it, and which I assume has been granted by the U.S. Department of Education, why we're sort of saying this is a highly qualified mandate. If, if, if we're no, you know, if, if Rhode Island's no longer tracking the whole uh, metric of highly qualified teachers, I don't, again, dispute that having a subject area expert sort of logically makes sense. I just don't want to say that it, this is a, a quote unquote mandate when it seems the state has asked for a waiver mm -hmm. from the U.S. Department of Ed for that. That's the first point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the second point I would say is, again, there was there was some areas that, you know, I asked that we could have more teed up for the committee, such as, you know, reinvestigating what the fiscal year 12 UCOA data, so the new Jamestown tuition rate exactly will be. You know, as we get closer, what exactly potentially our fiscal year 13 half is, you know, we're, we, we budgeted for only a $13,000 surplus. If we have more, not that I want to say we use it, but to Mr. Biscardin's point, you know, it may make us feel better about the 228 um, in that aspect. Um, and I also think that I would, again, like to put it up in context of a discussion about school start times and other stuff so we tee up all the priorities for spending and make a decision. Again, I don't see, you know, I agree with Ms. Clark and, you know, maybe the, the 102 um, if the content area is thing, but I, again, I don't see the issue of waiting two weeks and teeing this fully up with all the facts um, and, and all the data and other stuff present. Okay, if I can respond. Um, first about your point on the highly qualified, you know, um, I, I looked at the emails that you sent uh, in, in concerning that. I've asked Dr. Pizzullo about it. I've asked um, uh, our HR person, Deb Gardner, about it. Um, you know, we are not responsible for what ride tracks or does not track. Um, I don't know uh, why uh, a few years ago there was a number on uh, InfoWorks that said we had 20 percent of our faculty at the high school who were not highly qualified. Um, I've asked ride myself that question and they could not answer it. Um, my thinking is that may have had something to do with, uh, with paperwork issues. 
Um, Tom Kenworthy mentioned that he had something to that effect in Cumberland years ago, uh, and it might have been during a year where we were kind of transitioning to this, and, and so some of those statistics are skewed a little bit. We do not have 20% of our high school faculty that is not highly qualified. But um, on several occasions in my career as an administrator, um, going back to my years as an assistant principal at Charaho, um, we had to make amends for the highly qualified piece there, and we have to do it here. And we've just been instructed to do so with this ride review this year. Um, so I, I don't know, I can't account for, you know, what RIDE is telling you. I'm not responsible for that tracking. I'm not sure what they mean by tracking and not tracking. But I do know um, that um, this is, this is a, a mandate to us, that we have to do this. Um, and, you know, the other piece is, you know, where, where the, the issue of what we have to do and what we um, just should do, because it's ethically the right thing. I mean, they may be a little bit blurred here. Um, right now, the programs as they exist, I'm not comfortable with. And they need some extra support. And it, I just feel, you know, um, as, a, as an educator and just as a human being, that it is the right thing to do, the right place to put our priorities right now um, for this. And um, in terms of the, the timing, um, I, I understand your point that there's no real harm in taking two extra weeks, but part of this is um, our preparation. Um, having a couple of extra weeks, we can know to start advertising for these positions, and the early bird gets the worm with a, a lot of, you know, these um, job ads. So I'd like to be able to let our special ed staff know how to plan, that, that we, we know what to expect, and to start looking for the right staff to to take these particular positions that we're going to be including. So I'm hoping that you'll do it tonight. I mean, will it absolutely kill me if, if we have to wait? I guess not. But I'm, I'm hoping that we can get some, some clarity around that. That doesn't mean we can't get back to the drawing board in two weeks, make some adjustments in this and some of these other items, um, relook at a few things. We're going to have to consider the 93 uh, it, and, and to see exactly that it comes in that way. It may come in a little bit differently. And uh, we also have another 55 to account for. So there's going to be more discussion. There's going to be another mix. I'm going to have another proposal for you, and I will run all of my thoughts by you before I do it, and you can weigh in. So I, I don't see what we lose by just kind of getting some clarity around that we're definitely not going to be including librarians in .5 high school, and we definitely are going to be including this, this ALP need, which it's not the first time we've mentioned this. It, it, is, it is something that, you know, I've, I've kind of prepped you for throughout the year with a few presentations from Dr. Pizzullo, um, and so I hope you can, you can see the need in that. So. Uh, okay, I see um, Mrs. Avanzato, uh, Mr. Buscard, and Mr. Mudge. Just a couple of quick comments. Um, I'm not adverse to waiting a couple of weeks, um, but I'm not sure what it'll accomplish from my perspective, other than having maybe um, Patty Pizzullo come in and have a more candid discussion. I guess we're going to have to have the candid discussion about some of the dis disruption and some of the actual things that are occurring in the schools for people to understand why we need to add these hires. It, it, it's all very general on the sheet. But what it is is it's impacting education in a kind of a major way from what I've heard from several people that work in the district. Just my own personal opinion of it is that start times, while important and very much impacting family life and convenience, when compared with what, we, what we've been told is going on in some, with some of the programs and some of the situations in the schools, I couldn't support putting substantial amounts of money into buses and start times as opposed to more staffing that we desperately need. I want to, you know, if people want more information, then we need to hear from the special educators and some of the issues and things that have been happening in the schools that you don't hear about every day, we don't talk about at the table, but we may have to do that if, if, if there needs to be a more candid conversation. That's just my own personal um, opinion of, the, of weighing those two things. But I would not be adverse to waiting, but I think if we're going to wait, we need to get information from uh, Patty and others and, and, and uh, have it discussed openly. I think we have to keep in mind that our town and the, the um, 
demographics in the town are changing. And we have a higher poverty level in this town than a lot of other towns of similar um, level in terms of our school systems. And we're seeing more impacts from that in our school system. And that's just something we're going to be dealing with. You, if we ignore that, it will drag the entire system down. Just a, just a comment. Mr. Bessgarden and then Mr. Mudge. Uh, thank you, Ms. Page. Uh, you know, I know I, I, um, a few minutes ago I, I said that uh, I supported the highly qualified teacher mandate, but in light of what's been discussed, I, I, I now have a few more questions before I, I, I give that blanket approval. What, Dr. Ojay, does highly qualified, is, does that um, denote experience in I mean, it, 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 it means you've reached a certain level of certification in your subject area. Uh, the thinking is, um, for instance, a student, uh, uh, I mean, and this is, this is part of the reason um, that math scores are such a problem in our state. Uh, you know, and th this is the thinking of RIDE. Now I'm coming at you with, and, and people have disagreements about this. But if a student is responsible to pass, pass the math kneecap to graduate, and they are, um, it is not appropriate for us to have them taught by a special educator who doesn't necessarily have any certification in math. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Right. Because they're responsible for the same test all the regular ed kids are. So the regular ed kids get, you know, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, with a regular ed, with a certified teacher, highly qualified in their area, in secondary education. But a special ed kid who may be behind in that area to start off with doesn't get educated by a math teacher. That doesn't happen much, but it has happened in this district. And that's, that's what they're saying, that needs to be rectified. So I'm not saying take the special educator away, but you need to add that certified math teacher. Otherwise, you're not really giving the kid a heck of a, a good chance to pass that exam uh, when the time comes. And, and you may be preventing that person from graduating from high school. That's the thinking. I, I, okay, thank you for that. And my other question is then, but if Ride is not tracking it, then there's no way to know if it's being followed, correct? If, if something's not being tracked, something can, there's no way to know if it's being followed. So I guess my, my thinking is, can we accomplish the same thing? Can we accomplish and, and satisfy the needs of those students with some, with, without having to, with, I guess, overlooking this mandate. Is there a way to accomplish it? Because my thinking is if, is if this, um, I'm sorry? I, I don't mean to interrupt you. No matter what, come September, every special education child, other than a, a small group, is, go, is, is required to be taught by a subject area teacher. I understand that. So if you don't vote on this to add the people, then somehow the high school is going to have to reorganize to make sure that the special education teachers will be, I mean, special education students will be taught by the subject area teachers. In this case, so what it's going to mean is, school ad, yeah, what it's, right. Both what it's going to mean is that teachers are going to be pulled in other areas to meet that requirement. It's a mandate. We've been found in not, we found that we were not in compliance when Ride came out and did its review several months ago. So it's not that you're approving putting a, a regular ed teacher in a special ed teacher's classroom, you, it, it, you have no choice. You, you, it's not whether you're approving or disapproving. It will happen in September. What you're approving is the additional staff right now to make it happen. You're commenting and, on something. And if that, I, if I could, but but that, that comment is really irrelevant to what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Jen, no, 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 it is. no disrespect. No, no, it, no it's not. Because you, you're not, you, I don't think I made my point clear enough. You're, my, you're looking at two different places. Where RIDE reports on what our certification is, is different than the specific letter that we have received when they have come around to evaluate us. And they have said during their evaluation, your teachers are not all highly qualified. This is totally different from what they report on, or they don't report on their website. They have specifically and told us as North Kingstown, you need to improve this. These teachers who are teaching these students must be highly qualified. So that's irregardless of whatever they're doing or not doing on their website. This is something they've told us and we have to do. When did they tell us that? Um, they, they told us that in the, in the review that was done this year, 
Dr. Pizzullo presented that to you at an earlier presentation earlier this year. And we, and, we, and we talked about it again when she made her presentation, I think it was at our last meeting on the 23rd. Um, and, and, and maybe there's a discrepancy here. Whether RIDE has to put some numbers on a sheet to send to the federal government, say, you know, how many highly qualified teachers there are in the state is one thing. And if that's what they're calling tracking, you know, fine. But that doesn't mean that they have not told us that this is something that we have to do. And again, uh, just looking at the basic logic of it, you know, not that I always agree that everything from RIDE is totally logical, just so you know, but in this case, it makes perfect sense to me. We're holding a student accountable to graduate high school for passing a certain test. I think it is incumbent on us to provide that student with a certified, highly qualified teacher in that subject area. And this is the cheapest way I can figure out how to do it. And, and, and do the ALP appropriately in the meantime. What we have tried to experiment with is to bring some of those students into regular classrooms, and it hasn't always worked. And we've run into some significant problems. So, you know, I, I don't know about the, the tracking piece. Like I said, I, I didn't answer that question for right. I'm not even sure what they mean by tracking. But what I do know and what we've reported to you is that this is something we are required to do. Okay, uh, well, then, uh, oh, go ahead, Mr. Piscard, you can finish up then, Mrs. Yeah, Clark. I wasn't quite finished yet. Thank Sorry. you. Then again, then, then again, I guess this goes back to, to um, what I have difficulty with with number one and number two, because we're calling this a ride mandate, but it's really not the same mandate that Mr. Jones was speaking of earlier. This is a different mandate. This was a this was a an audit, basically, of our of, of our teachers, right? Okay. Am I, is it, would that be fair to call it but that? It was an audit or a review of our special education programming in the district. All right. Well, then, my question is that, and you seem to have answered it, but I just want to make sure that, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't want this to be misconstrued that I'm not concerned about these kids passing uh, the kneecaps and their mass mass scores, but. It's, right. You said it. This is the, this is the most cost-effective way of accomplishing this. Yes. That's all my concern was. I was I was curious if there was another way to basically get what we needed to get done, but doing it without having uh, costs associated with uh, somebody at the top of their pay scale. Yeah. I I you know um, that's a, a an excellent question and um, and you know that has been probably one of the biggest sources of frustration for for me and for. Uh, a lot of our staffs, uh, the, the Wickford Middle School with their ALP program, uh, at the elementary level, uh, well, the highly qualified mandate is not at the elementary level, but the high school and the, and, and you know, we have done our best to find whatever creative ways we can to solve these problems. And, you know, in a few cases, um, there may be some kids who can, you know, go to a, a regular classroom for part of their day and, and accomplish this, and we do that when we can. Um, and, uh, for instance, at the high school, uh, Mr. Williams' program, um, we try to do those kinds of things whenever possible. And that's, that's the goal, to get them back to, you know, the closest, um, you know, uh, program to the, the regular program that we can. But in some cases, what we're finding is that's just not working. And so this, this is the, the best alternative. It doesn't include out-of-district placements. Um, it doesn't include, you know, um, all kinds of different options that we could have explored that would have been much more expensive. So we're trying, you know, I'm trying to do this uh, as inexpensively as we can, but more importantly, I'm just trying to do it appropriately. You know, I want to follow the law. I want, I want to do what's right by the students and give them every opportunity to um, pass that kneecap as possible. I mean, it's no secret that, you know, the hundreds, no, the thousands of students in Rhode Island, and there are about Seven, what was that number? I always remember it. Now I forgot it. About 59 students at North Kingston High School. A number of them are, are, are special ed students who, who don't have their requirement in math yet, and they're working on it in their senior year. So that's that's the key. You know, making sure that 100% of our students are going to be able to pass that kneecap. Right. Thank you. So. Mrs. Clerken. Uh, 
Um, I think, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to the majority of school committee members having more questions or concerns or uh, issues was number three, four, and five. So um, I agree with Mrs. Avanzato that from the outside looking in, it, it, it may be a little um, vague and what we need to do is get a lot more information from Dr. Pizzullo as to what, what is going on and, and why these things are being proposed. Posed. So I would recommend that we just wait another two weeks to, and that we do our due diligence as committee members to get all that information that everyone is sitting here talking about to make an informed decision. <clears throat> Mr. Mudge, sorry. Uh, Mr. Biscardin was just asking me as a clarification as to when Dr. Pizzullo was here. Yeah, I, I, I must have missed that. But uh, apparently that's a, a, a new or a recent uh, a finding, I guess, uh, that uh, the state now requires us to meet that mandate. And that this is over and above what was, again, in your the budget you we sent to the town council and you know, in March, right? So that's a new requirement, even since we submitted, submitted our budget to the town council. It, it's a new request for me. It, it is not necessarily a new requirement. It's something that we became more acutely aware of as the year went on. But, but um, it wasn't in our 58 million. No, it wasn't. Four. Okay. Now, in addition to that, this 228,000. How does that come into play? Because that was all basically on the AOP issues as well, wasn't it? It's, it's not necessarily related to the ALP or not. It, it's, it's money that's in the mix. Well, I understand, but see, I'm really trying to understand all the funding. Again, I thought that the ALP money is equal to 297. The, the fund balance number is 228. When, well, you, when you put them together with all the other cuts, you get to zero. Well, the 228 we spoke of was for the to restore the to put, was going to be used for ALP, right? The 228. No. No, it was simply to start by appropriating fund balance. Fund balance for what? Include that in the mix so that we could get to zero with the cuts, the mixture of cuts and ads that I'm, I'm listing here. And, and when, if, if these three items are approved, we will have $55,000 remaining before we have a balanced budget. And we will also have an unknown of $93,000 yeah. with the governor's money, which we're going to have to talk about at a later time anyway. So, again, I'm trying to structure this to the original budget we, we went to, and and this portion, like Mr. Piscotton says, is something that's been added or a requirement that came about before, you know, or after we submitted the budget to the council. So it wasn't in our $58 million middle. That's all I'm trying to clear up. That's right. Okay. So I understand that. Uh, so given that, uh, I, I obviously agree with everyone else here. We need to postpone this. We need a little more information, I, I think, on this, this whole thing. And uh, I would ask, uh, uh, what was our track record or our metrics, if you may, uh, with uh, – in this area for the, these uh, students that uh, we're going to uh, enhance now with uh, with this uh, basically uh, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars of uh, of uh, you know, I, I I appreciate you know the need to to hear this information, um, but I, I, I remind questions. you that you know we we had a meeting earlier this year with Dr. Pizzullo to go over these these issues that was the results of the. The um, review, and and we discussed these very issues. And um, do you remember what meeting that was? Just so if they can go back. It was. And, uh, I, I don't remember the date. Yeah. It, it was. It was in the fall. Um, oh, and oh, and then there. you know, I, I don't know if we went into you know minute detail, but it, it was referenced again at our last meeting when we talked about the Davisville. I mean, it's it's at the crux of, you know. But if it was in the last fall, then why wasn't in the budget? No, no, no. It was not in last fall. No, it, was it was either I, in April I, I or March. It, it, it was, See, I, yeah, it was in the winter. Can I speak to Yes, Mrs. Evans, I'm sorry. I, I actually wanted to speak to that point, um, and that is that 
we asked uh, the, the superintendent and the special education department to look for ways to bring our students back in district because we're spending a tremendous amount of money out of district. And also, we were told by the special education director she didn't feel like we were always getting, the children were always getting what they needed at those placements, and they were very, very expensive. We were interested in bringing them back in district. Um, we were warned at that time, at the beginning of the year, by the superintendent that, you know, this is going to be a fluid situation. We don't know how it's going to work. We're, we're crafting the programs for the students, but it has to be flexible. And we may find that we have more needs or there's an issue that arises. And as the year has gone on, I know myself, I've spoken several times to Patty Pizzullo, and she's told me the issues have been increasingly getting more troublesome, more difficult, and she relatively recently has been saying they're unmanageable in some ways. Um, so that's how I understood the progression of this situation in terms of the ALP. Um, but I do, I also support, I think, waiting two weeks since that's where the, where the committee seems to be going. I su I support what the superintendent is asking for with these uh, personnel ads as well. However, I would also like to ask for something additional. Um, we had a, a transportation audit and we implemented several of the recommendations of that audit, but not all of those. I was wondering if we could have an update on that report. If there's anything left in there that we could scratch up or could look at. Um, because I know there's a lot of interest in several members of the committee and the community in terms of the, the start times issue. I, as I said, if I have to weigh the two, if it's just against those two, I've got to weigh the ALP higher. But I think we need to discuss it at least or have it in the mix. Um, you know, if, if we have to wait two weeks, I, I'm fine with that, really. You know, I, I just, you know, uh, you, you understand my point of view on, on the need for this. And um, I recently sent you the transportation audit. Um, we, if you want to look at that, meet. I, we could we could talk some more about that piece. Um, I want to remind you that um, one of the original cuts that we did before we even went to the town council was for a bus. Yes, I do. And so and and so I, I I'm not seeing any more there in transportation. Um, I'll look at it again with anybody who wants to look at it with me, but I'm just not seeing any more right now. Dan, could I also ask uh, what's the motion on the table right now? Who made it? <laughs> I believe you made it. It was you. Um, okay. okay. I'm going to withdraw Items it. Three through five. <laughs> That's okay. why I needed to know if I made it. <laughs> All right. A while ago. So our motion has been withdrawn from the table. I have one final so, comment on um, that. Well, we, we don't need we, to have any more comments if well, the motion has been withdrawn. Well, so I understand, but I, I still would like say. to ask a question to clarify this because it's going to come back up again. And then, I think... No, I'd say that you can I ask it at some other time. We're I didn't. At nine o'clock here. I wasn't allowed to I'd finish like to my questions before, man. Um, agenda. I wasn't allowed to finish my questioning when Linda jumped in, which I didn't and interrupt. I there's no more motion okay. on the table, so there's nothing that we need to vote on. We're going back to the original agenda. Could you? So that brings us back to citizens' comments. Can I just ask one question, please? You may please. ask that at some other time. Okay, it's re 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 of this. No, that Mr. Mudge, we're, we're going back to the original agenda. Well, why don't we? This issue isn't finished yet. I, I think one of the things we talked about was um, we would make a motion to substitute the one percent and put the librarians and the high school back in. We don't need to do that. Okay. No, we, we didn't. We haven't taken money. We don't need to do that right now. We I mean, that's not on out. the the superintendent. Okay. We're only voting on his recommendations, and right now that's not his recommendation. Right. He so didn't, he he's didn't take not them out, he's so not recommending that we cut any librarians. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm making sure that I, I make that clarification. Thank you. The only voted on the only the number staffing actions. I'm going to make that. Go ahead, Mr. Plimpton. Oh, I want to put it up now. Okay. Oh, okay. Mark Clinton, uh, 115 Pleasant Street, also on the facilities subcommittee for the schools. Um, you know, I, I haven't been to one of these meetings in a while, and especially when it comes to budgeting. That's a good <laughs> and, I, and I do have to say, uh, I now know why I don't come. Uh, first of all, if I could digress just for one second, if you'd give me a little liberty to, to digress a little bit. Um, when, when we come and we give our time as a community member, you know, and it, and it leads into a little bit what we have going on here today. It seems the same things get rehashed over and over. And um, 
I don't want to say it's a lack of preparation, but you know, we try to come to these meetings and we, when we have our subcommittee meetings, we try to be very prepared. And tonight, uh, even coming here, and you know, Bill, I've known you 35 years since I was a small guy, a uh, little guy. And it just seems like there could be prepared questions that could be, um, this stuff could be vetted out long before we came here, even on this budget, whether it's me coming up, whether you want to ask a question, everybody knows what we're coming here for. We usually have plenty of time, and it just seems just a suggestion that a lot of this stuff could be vetted out or, or, or simple questions could be asked before we get up here. And uh, it's frustrating to even be out in the audience and listen to some of these things, Never, nevertheless be part of a, of a subcommittee uh, that frankly can feel unappreciated at times. So um, I would say it's just very frustrating to listen to this, and I think it could be, could be done a little bit better. Mark, can I respond to that? No, no, we're not going to respond. If, you, if you'd like not? to respond, to Mr. no. Mr. 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 Mudge. I'd be glad to. Because, you know, it's important, No, Mark, no, we're not going to respond my, my, at this time. Mark, okay. I tried no, to there, bring there is this no to response. people's attention a year and a half ago. Nobody wanted to listen. No, no, no response. Bill, I'll tell you what. Because I, we, we've all sat through it enough. You know where I live. Come by. We'll have a coffee. That would be fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All right. You, Dr. Jay, I think you took up superintendent's report with your um, budget. Am I? I'm good. Okay, so that brings us to comment, consent. Comment on superintendent's uh, presentation, please. No, Dr. Long, no, we're, would we're you not going please to address that question I'd asked you to, no, regarding Mudge, graduation? We're not going to comment on the superintendent's evaluation, or I should say the superintendent's budget at this time. Well, let me put it on the agenda. I don't want to put it on the agenda. Okay, item. right now we are now in consent agenda, and um, – I'm asking for first we need to seal the executive. We're in recess right now. Oh, that's right. Thank you. All right. So under consent agenda, is there items that people would like to exempt? There's nothing to exempt. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I would have stayed. All right, so that brings us to the end of the consent agenda, and um, we have already covered under unfinished business um, the superintendent's budget, so that brings us to policy. This is the second. Well, I should talk about unfinished. I have some unfinished business. Well, I'm going by the agenda. Well, I understand. And the agenda has under unfinished business the budget, which we've already talked about, the CIP, which we've already talked about, and that brings us to the policy. So this is the second read on the family medical leave policy. Nobody had any questions before. Do, um, do I have a motion to approve the family medical leave policy? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. All right, so that brings us to the new business, and this brings us to a discussion of the appointment of um, a school committee member for the Veterans Scholarship Committee. Um, Dr. Jay. Yeah, I just, I heard from um, uh, Mrs. Al Alwood um, at the town. Um, oh. Um, I'm sorry, I got a Jeanette. name wrong. Jeanette, yeah. yes. Alward. Jeanette. Alward. Alward. okay. Um, and, and she notified me that this is a, a, um, a scholarship committee that, um, and she, I have the email here and I lost it, but anyway, it basically requires um, that a school committee member sit on this committee and at a certain point they get to a point where they have enough money to actually give a scholarship. Next year will be one of those years. <clears throat> so this is a committee that will give a scholarship at the end of next year, but by the nature of the scholarship they need to know who the school committee member is before July 1st of this year. So if anybody is interested in sitting with this group and discussing who would get this veteran scholarship um, when the time comes, um, that's what we're looking for right now. So what I would say, if you're interested, tell Dr. Ajay and we can vote on you for next time. Or you can tell us today, too. It's not a voting matter this time. It is just something that we needed to make sure it was explained. So, Mr. Jones, were you interested? I, I'll do it. I just um, maybe we could get a link or more details or something in the – uh, I, I will I will forward to you that email that I received. I... Okay. Actually, you had to move on to the next agenda item. When you do, I have some time. Uh, I think that brings us to um, 
basically the end where we need to go into executive session. So I'll take oh, a motion to uh, adjourn to executive session. Time out. Time session. out. Don't what, what, what about correspondence? We don't talk about correspondence. You may read it. Well, yeah, I, I have some correspondence uh, from a, a parent concerned about the uh, graduation and the fact that apparently the girls this year uh, must wear black, I guess. And I right. mentioned that. Right. I believe that the doctor addressed that, me, I, that um, to you, and you I, may submit your correspondence yeah, to I, you uh, Mrs. Did. Berglund. And so that and that's the what next I like. meeting, then I would like to have is, Dr. Um, so the just the school committee can clarify see it. that for so. the parents so we don't keep getting phone calls, okay, which he did. Thank you, Dr. Mujie. And I just thought it should be clarified so that people all know that. That's you know, all. I, I'd, I'd be happy to take any phone calls from parents who want to give me a call. Okay, with regard to the changing the colors for the girls? With regard to, to any life. issue. Yeah. Well, sure. you don't want to make a statement why the girls have to be in black uh, robes this year? Well, it's, it's not on the agenda. It's a, slimming, it it's a slimming color, Bill. That's well, why. Well, it just would be good to just maybe say that the, the graduation committee discussed it and decided. So a group of students presented the idea to the graduation committee. Uh, they've presented this idea for a number of years now. The graduation committee endorsed it, um, ran it by Dr. Kenworthy. He has no problem with it, and uh, neither do I. Okay. So that's all I wanted to. Have All right, so we have a motion on the floor to go quick correspondence. Mrs. Avogadro. Yes, I received a quick correspondence from, um, from Lynn Moran, and I just wanted to thank Dr. Auger because she got together and is starting a scholarship um, in memory of her father, uh, Paul Licio, um, and is working with Dr. Auger, who gave her some direction in, um, on that to benefit a student in our school system. And at the same time, they're also going to get the student gets to choose a community um, cause in North Kingstown to also give money to at the same time. So the student receives a scholarship and then the student designates money, say, to the NK Food Pantry to another community uh, organization in North Kingstown, which I think is a wonderful um, thing. And she said thank you very much, Dr. Roger, so I just want to say that. Thank you. Are you mind if, if you have correspondence to submit it to Lorreen and she can make sure that it gets into our packets. All right, so I have a motion. Do I have a second to move into executive second? Session? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you.